。要想在学习中文方面取得可观的进步，把中文的发音练好是非常有必要的。把中文的发音练好了，不但可以帮助跟你对话的中国人准确地理解你的意思。地道的发音更能帮助你给中国人留下深刻的印象。你的口音就在帮你告诉对方：“嘿，我很努力的学习中文，我对你们的语言和文化充满热情。”这不但会为你赢得尊重和钦佩，更能为你和对方的深层交往机会打下基础。So, how do we develop awesome Mandarin pronunciation? Well, I'm going to teach you pretty much everything I know in this video. So I'm going to split these tips up into two main categories. One is how to actually practice, what to actually do each day to get awesome Mandarin pronunciation, and then the second category is just sort of general advice and wisdom on how to approach things psychologically. So my first tip for you is to think about the tones not as individual tones, but as at least pairs, or if not. Entire sequences of tones.、And、the reason why I suggest that is because that's what Chinese people do. That's what I did. I just listened to entire words and phrases, and then I repeated back over and over again. Now, another cool thing about tones in Chinese, aside from the fact that there's only 19 tone pairs to worry about, is that there'll be many different words you'll learn in the language, but the tones are always the same. Think of it like a note played on an instrument. You might change the instrument. You might go from a trombone to a clarinet, but an A is always an A. And guess what? A first tone, first tone is always a first tone, first tone, even if it has completely different syllables attached to it. So, for example, shang xin, broken-hearted in Chinese, is the same exact tones as. Beiji plane. I'll put a link in the description so you can download this tone pairs chart and also some flashcards with audio for each example. And what you can do is just listen to the audio and the flashcards over and over again. Just do this for a couple of minutes a day, and it will solidify your understanding of these different tone pairs. Another concept that you can use that's related to this is the idea of tone pair anchors. So you see these words on the tone pair chart. Well, you can either choose them or another word if you like. That is your anchor for that particular tone pair. Remember, no matter what syllable is being used, the tones are always the same. So you could just practice 今天今天今天 And when it comes to learning another word with that tone pair, you'll be equipped to say it perfectly because you've practiced that particular pair so much. You're just using one particular word to cement that tone pair. Another thing to remember about these tone pairs is that some of them are tougher than others for learners. So therefore, you should spend a bit more time on these than the other ones. And my top five most difficult tone pairs are as follows. So the first one is first tone, fourth tone. So for example, 工作工作 or 说话说话知道知道 And another pretty tough tone pair is the fourth tone, first tone. So just swapping it around. Here's another example: 在家 at home. 在家 or 第一 D. Getting a bit tougher now. The third one is third tone and second tone. 有钱有钱小时小时起床起床 And then we have second tone, third tone. 没有没有可以可以如果如果 And then finally, third tone, fourth tone. 可乐可乐，请问请问米饭。So of all those, I think personally the third, second tone is the toughest one, but that's just my personal opinion. But anyway, you find the ones that are most challenging for you, and you spend some extra time on them. Another quick pronunciation tip for you is before you're about to go and do some speaking, maybe you're about to have a session with a tutor, or you're just about to have a conversation, or you're about to do some sort of shadowing activity, which I'll get into in just a second. It's a really cool thing. Try warming up your mouth muscles before you get started. There's tons of exercises you can try. If you just go on YouTube and search vocal warm up or articulator exercises, speech therapy exercises, how to warm up your mouth, you just search for one of these and just copy what they do. There's tons of different ways to do it. So if you just spend a few seconds even warming up before you have a conversation, you'll find that your ability to produce the most difficult sounds, especially in quick succession, will be much easier. So if you want to get to fluency in Chinese, you want to sound awesome and Impressive in the language, then you really need to start listening to Chinese every day if you aren't already. At least 30 minutes, maybe two or three hours if you can. Just listen passively when you're on the go, and just get those hours in. Because listening, although more challenging than reading, gives you something that reading can't. It gives you the ability to mimic and sound like a real native speaker. If you just spend all your time reading because that's easier and it's more comfortable for you, your vocabulary will increase. Your understanding of the language will still increase. But 
it won't help you sound like a native. And very closely related to listing immersion is shadowing. Now, some people call it shadowing, some people call it parroting. Uh, it's also known as chorusing, but they're all very similar, if not identical activities. Shadowing is where you put on a piece of material. Usually it's at least a few sentences long and you just repeat along with the content at the same speed approximately and try to imitate 100% what you're hearing. If you just do this for a few minutes every day, you will notice a compounding effect on your ability to pronounce Chinese accurately. You start off with a smaller version of shadowing called chorusing, where you just imitate individual sentences over and over again. So if you just want to focus on individual sentences or short dialogues, or you want to go a bit more advanced and you want to listen to half an hour pieces like I do over and over again, I recommend that you go for depth rather than breadth, by which I mean focus on one piece of content and listen to it and shadow it many, 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 many times, as opposed to just listening to one piece today and then another piece the next day just go deep not broad and you'll find that you'll get so much more out of each piece of material so if you do tons of listening and you throw in shadowing practice as well I don't think there's anything more effective than these two activities for getting perfect or near perfect tones in Mandarin and that makes sense right because this is exactly what Chinese people do to learn their language and they have pretty much perfect tones not absolutely perfect believe it or not but still pretty much perfect because they just listen and repeat, listen and repeat to more and more complex material until they become fluent in the language. Another tip for you is tongue twisters. Now this could be a great warm up activity, but it could also just be a general activity you use to hone your muscles. So people do this in the industry of say, hosting or performing or acting, including a friend of ours, Scott, who is a professional bilingual host in China. He practices Rao Kou Ling, or Chinese tongue twisters, pretty much daily just to keep his mouth muscles and tongue muscles in shape. Now you'll find a bunch of tongue twisters just going on YouTube and searching Chinese tongue twisters. Another great tip for you is to focus on what Chinese people actually do with their mouths. So watch people in action. So you're not just listening to podcasts, things like that. You're actually watching videos of Chinese people speak and you'll notice that they're always very relaxed in their mouth muscles. They're not over exaggerating their facial movements or straining whatsoever. And you should try and imitate that wherever you can. I know this is a bit difficult at first because a lot of the sounds in Mandarin Chinese are completely non-existent in English and you're trying to form these new sounds and that will take time and you do have to train your mouth muscles to some degree. But it's also a good idea not to overdo it and add extra strain unnecessarily that even native speakers don't give themselves. Let's take this sentence as an example. You notice that my face here is just kind of chilled. I'm not really like straining or anything like that. My face is rather relaxed like a Chinese person would. But when I first started out, I was super over the top with my pronunciation and I would have done something like this. You notice that I'm saying like, like a really hardcore Beijing accent, which is not even technically standard Mandarin anyway, but I would really like put my tongue at the roof of my mouth, almost choking myself with my own tongue to try and sound more like a Beijinger, but actually it was causing so much strain unnecessarily that it made communicating next to impossible. So if you ever notice that while speaking Chinese that your mouth muscles and tongue muscles can't really keep up with what you want to say, you're probably trying too hard and you need to relax your muscles a little bit. Another thing you can try to improve your pronunciation is recording yourself. Now, I don't just mean audio. You can actually just open up QuickTime or whatever video recorder you have on your laptop and just say something, a, a sentence or an entire story, perhaps. This is not only great for just generally practicing your speaking, but you can also watch the video afterwards and maybe even compare it to a Chinese person saying the same thing. And yes, this whole process is rather time intensive, but this is the kind of activity that could not only fix bad pronunciation, if that's what you think you have, but it can also take your pronunciation to that next level. Another thing you can do with these recordings is send them to a language exchange partner or tutor, and they can give you some corrections so you don't have to wait until you're actually in class to do that. Another thing to remember when it comes to pronunciation is that although you don't need to know that much theory, in fact, 
the whole process of speaking great Chinese is probably about one to 5% theory and the rest is pure practice. But if you just get an expert to explain to you where to put your tongue for ji ji qi and zhi zhi shi, where to put your tongue, how to aspirate, these little theoretical things, that can really make a huge difference. So if you'd like a full guide on how to pronounce every single Mandarin syllable and sound and tone accurately like a native speaker, go check out this video I made for you. Another big tip I have for you is to find what is often referred to as a language parent. So this is basically some sort of personality in Chinese that you like, someone that creates content, that has a lot of content and is preferably the same gender as you, someone that you actually want to sound like. And then you just kind of obsessively listen to this person's stuff and this is the kind of content you want to use later on for your shadowing material. So a great example of a language parent you can use is Bear Talk. He's a man with a very nice voice, a very clear Mandarin who is very popular among Chinese learners. He speaks slowly and clearly and he's a good sort of choice for you. I personally really liked Luo Zhengyu. He's a, or Luo Par, the presenter of Luo Ji Suwei, a podcast that is very popular in China. Another thing I recommend doing to improve your pronunciation is to experiment a lot with tutors. So you wanna try and find a tutor, whether that's male or female, that you not only like, and not only is a very good communicator, they know how to ask a question and keep a conversation going and things like that, but this person most importantly makes you feel comfortable. Even if they're giving you somewhat harsh corrections to your pronunciation or your grammar, the way you're speaking, the words you're using, etc. You want to just find someone that's like a language buddy, a friend, someone that you look forward to having meaningful interactions with and someone that you don't mind if they correct your pronunciation. You don't take it personally because you know it's not meant in a bad spirited way or they're not just being annoying. And it might take you getting through a few tutors before you arrive at this person um, and it doesn't have to be just one person either, but just try and make that a goal of yours to try and achieve at some point. And this one's just a quick tip for you. If you ever have trouble with certain words or combinations of sounds in Chinese, you can just basically say it slower and then repeat until you can say it faster. And this is gonna be really useful for you to do, especially if you come across words that involve what I call tongue acrobatics in Chinese, where you would use two completely alien tongue positions that don't exist in English, or three or four in a row. So for example, in the word chu your tongue is like up, which is not an English tongue position, and your tongue is then down, behind your bottom teeth. So doing those multiple in a row can be kind of crazy and a bit difficult for you, but just slow that down until you're able to say it quickly. So when I was starting out with Chinese, I couldn't say 这件事情, 这件事情, 这件事情. 这件事情, because it's the tongue up and the tongue down, then tongue up and tongue down again in quick succession. Part of the reason for that is that I wasn't really at that time following my own advice for you today, which is to not overdo it. I was like, 这件事情. I was trying to overdo it, which was making it even more difficult. So yeah, you're going to come across that sort of phenomenon quite often in the early days, but don't worry, just say it slower until you can say it faster. And speaking of saying things slower, well, I recommend that you try and slow your speech down in general whilst you're working on your pronunciation and your fluency. That will not only make it easier to pronounce things accurately, but also to say them fluently. Slowing your speech down by about 20, maybe even 30%, will allow your mouth muscles to keep up with your brain. So instead of trying to be native speed, just be happy with saying it a little bit slower and that will just benefit everyone because it won't sound weird to a native speaker. It's not like you're saying half speed or anything like that. It's just a little bit slower and you're gonna get the chance to sound so much better, pronounce things clearer and just overall sound more fluent. So go ahead and give that one a try. Now, the next section of tips here is all about just general advice and some wisdom that I've collected over the years I've spent with this language. Be sure to expect the unexpected. So you're gonna have lots of listening material and you'll be immersing in that. You'll be reading, listening, watching Chinese stuff. But the vast majority of Chinese content, in terms of TV shows at least, are perfect Mandarin. They're kind of in standard Mandarin. And certainly any graded material you manage to get your hands on will also be pretty much perfectly standard Mandarin too. But here's the deal, the vast majority of Mandarin speakers in China 
do not have a perfect Mandarin accent. In fact, I would say the minority do in their day-to-day -day lives. And there's also a ton of content, say for example, podcast content, where people are just being themselves, talking about a bunch of topics, and they are gonna have accents. Accents are gonna come up all the time for you, as well as just different habits. So I'll give you an example that really threw me for a loop. When I first met my now wife, we were talking one day and I heard her speak Chinese and say, with like a V sound. And I was just like, what the heck? And I remember checking all my books <laughs> and I was listening to my, my flashcards and I was like, that's not how they say it. You're doing it wrong, it was my immediate response. Hey, I've spent all this time and effort learning the language this way and you're doing it a different way, why? And she had no idea what I was talking about. She was like, what are you talking about? I'm not saying Veishama, I'm saying Veishama. And I was like, there, you just did it again. It's not like Chinese people even notice it as well, which makes it even more frustrating. But what do you wanna do is just take on this relaxed idea of expect the unexpected. Just be like, okay, I've learned it one way, but there's a whole bunch of other different ways people say it. And guess what? If they're native speakers, that means they're probably doing it right. And both ways are probably correct on some level. So for example, a very common question we get from people on our course is, hey, this person said ying when it's supposed to be ying. The ing sound in Chinese, depending on if they're from the north or not, is pronounced with a sort of y, y sound. And this really throws people off. It's like, wait a minute, standard Mandarin is ying, ying gai. It's not yung gai. Why are you saying it the second way? And it's like, well, that's just how Northerners say it. And standard Mandarin did come from mainly the North. So it's like, it's not incorrect. It's just something that you need to look out for and let wash over you. And you can even adopt that style of speaking if you want. So basically, I guess my advice here for you is to just go with the flow and don't be too surprised or frustrated when things turn out a little bit differently in reality compared to what you've learned in your study. My next tip for you is regarding that whole process of changing your mouth muscles. It does take time, but you will get there with practice. And it's not like years of practice, I'm talking weeks of practice. If you spend like a few minutes a day, within a few weeks or months, you can completely transform your pronunciation. For example, there was an interview I saw recently with a guy called Lao Ma Chris, and he was talking about how he completely transformed his pronunciation in just two months with a couple of hours a day of work. And this guy is now one of the best Mandarin speakers I've heard on the internet. So this advice goes for you if you have any bad habits that you know you have, you can fix them with some effort, okay? It would just take a little bit of time and some daily practice. Another idea that I think is very important to understand about Mandarin pronunciation or any pronunciation in any language you're trying to learn is do not try to aim for perfection. I mean, you can aim for perfection, but you're most likely never going to get there and you certainly don't need to. Guess what, my pronunciation is pretty good, but it's not perfect. I make mistakes all the time, and sometimes, especially if I'm tired or whatever, I might, my tones go wrong or maybe I mispronounce a word. And you know what, native speakers do too. I'll tell you something very important about this whole pronunciation thing. I personally would much rather listen to someone who spoke English very well. They had a good command of the language, but a very heavy accent than the other way around. Someone that had a perfect English accent, but couldn't really string much of a sentence together. And Chinese people are the same. If you don't have perfect tones or you don't have the perfect syllables, that's fine as long as you have a strong command of the language itself. Another piece of advice which is related to that, which I've kind of already alluded to, is that your state affects your pronunciation as it does your fluency in the language. So if you're tired or you've just done a workout, I'll tell you what, if someone comes up when I'm in the gym and I'm like out of breath or I've just done a heavy workout or something like that, and I'm trying to speak English with this person, it's not really gonna work out very well. So just don't hold yourself to this ridiculously high standard throughout the entire day, no matter what's going on. Now this next tip is related to a different facet of pronunciation, which is not to do with producing the sounds, but it's to do with identifying them. So pronunciation technically consists of, yes, production, but identifying the sounds so you can actually comprehend them is also a huge part of it, and reading them in terms of understanding pinyin. So if you have trouble understanding the Chinese you hear, you can't pass the sounds, you can't identify the words based on the tones quick enough, First off, that's a super common problem. Well, there's actually a really easy solution to this, which is to learn a lot more words. So often when you hear Chinese, especially at native speed, and you hear a bunch of words and tones in quick succession, you can't identify what words being said. But part of the reason why 
why you can't is because you don't have a big enough vocabulary. So your brain can't tell which tone combination is which word. But once you do have a vocabulary of say a few thousand common words, your brain has this big list of words with different tone combinations so it can check against things. So for example, you hear the words 吃饭, and you're not sure if it was actually 吃饭 with a first tone and a fourth tone. And you'll be able to confirm in your head whether that was first tone, fourth tone 吃饭 or another 吃饭 with a different tone combination. And guess what? Your brain will check and say, uh-uh, C-H-I-F-A-N, we don't know any other words with that spelling with a different tone combination. And we know a ton of words and we've heard these words tons. So it must be 吃饭 and it just does that instantly. So basically learn a bunch of words, get really familiar with those words through lots of listening immersion and your comprehension will improve. My final tip for you on pronunciation, which will vastly improve your tones and again, your ability to comprehend the language is to learn characters using our technique, the hands up movie method. Using this technique, you'll be able to associate the tones of characters with specific locations in your imagination. And this is a proven technique that really, really works. And now this is perfect for you because the very next step after grasping pronunciation is to start learning how to read. So if you'd like to learn any Chinese character in under 60 seconds using this memory palace technique, go check out this video and I'll give you the full guide on how to do it.